Watching AFC RD TV and the final score here at Hayden Road for this Saturday afternoon. AFC Russian Diamonds 1, Hennesford Town nil, And the man of the match, a familiar face here on AFC RD TV. It's AC Alexander, Alex Collard. Alex, well done today. Yes, thank you. Uh, the game started off first half, sort of a cagey affair. What did you think of the first 45 minutes? Uh, yeah, it wasn't our <laughs> finest moments, I don't think. I think we struggled to get into it. <clears throat> We, we couldn't really get a rhythm together, but you know, we said in there we, we've not really played very well, and we still come in, we're still in the game. Um, and, you know, we've done this so many times where you come in at half time thinking we played quite poor, still in the game, and you know, you put it right second half. I believe it was late in the first half off a corner kick. If the ball had even just grazed your head, I think the ball would have gone into the net. That was a close call. Yeah, it wasn't. It, it was a tricky one because I, sort of, I thought I timed it right, and as it started, it just sort of dropped a little bit <clears throat> sooner than I thought. Uh, I just couldn't get. I just couldn't get there in time. I maybe should have just thrown myself at it a bit, a bit more. But I just it just dropped, and I sort of came out of time with it. So at halftime, did you get a, a good pep talk from Burge? Yeah, absolutely. He, he said, you know, we haven't played our best and I think you know he's watched enough of our games now that he knows exactly what we're about he knows the standards we set ourselves and yeah, he's, you know he just said we're still in the game sure. um, let's take it up another 10 15 percent which is what we can do we know we know we're capable of it and uh, yeah he got our awards now the first maybe five ten minutes of the second half looked like a repeat of the first half and at times I was saying oh no this game has nil nil written all over it but uh, you finally got the pace and tempo uh, going good for diamonds and uh, sure enough you scored in the 75th minute yeah, how was that uh, great uh, corner pick from connor furlong uh, to you yeah it was something we knew we were going to work or we knew we were potentially going to get at them with um we'd heard from our reports that they were maybe a little bit that's maybe not one of their strengths and and obviously with our size in the team you know now we've had bushy into the team as well you know we've got three or four players six foot and above that can cause damage um and it was something we said we need to work on and it, yeah great ball in and just managed to get my head on it <laughs> and uh, you held on for the last 15 minutes extra time to win the game times it was a physical game out there today uh, a few injuries there for hitting for town yeah it was always going to be on the pitch you know <clears throat> it's not necessarily a pitch to be playing sort of total football oh, I, hate, I hate that term but um you know and this but this is what we do you know this is how we get to where we are we know what we can do and if we get a lead we grind it out we know what we know well, what course. we're doing now in retrospect do you think maybe it was a good thing that last week's game against at biggles wade uh, had to be called off because of a waterlogged pitch because it was a tough week for diamonds obviously uh yeah it was a tough week but I mean, as a group, we're all still very much together. So, you know, you give us two games, three games in that week, we'd have we'd have still gone into it and oh, given 100. percent So, yeah, it didn't make a difference. I suppose it gave the club a bit more time. We could, you know, assess the situation, sort of not act so quickly if we didn't, you know, didn't need to. So, yeah, it's just one of those. But a great win for Diamonds today, and it seemed like an emotional win too. I could see all the lads, the players, are grouped around at the end of the game, celebrating. Yeah, absolutely. It was it was a bit of a tricky one, really, because. Obviously, we all got brought in by Peaksy, 
Um, and you know, obviously seeing him leave, yeah, of course, we're all sad. But it was something we said to ourselves as a team, you know, whoever comes in, we give them absolutely everything. And ultimately, you know, it, it was emotional because a new manager could have come in and disrupted it. Bird's been brilliant. He's come in, he's, he's given advice where it's needed, you know, and he's, he's added to what we were doing, which is perfect. And, you know, it's a journey we're trying to go on. And, and that's why it was so much of a, an emotional one, really, for us all, because it was sort of that first hurdle. We're, we're still in it, we're still going. And, you know, Burge is leading us through it, which is great. Well, very good, Alex. Thanks again. Cheers. Cheers. Thank Andy you. Bruce and Alex, I'm now here with Burnley's interim manager, Andy Burgess. Andy, a win in the clean sheet in your first game in charge. You must be delighted with that. It's easy, this footballer, isn't it? <laughs> um, yeah, absolutely delighted. Listen, it, it wasn't a game for the purists. Um, it was, you know, nip and tuck at times. Uh, first half, we perhaps didn't didn't adjust our style or, or, or deal with the, the environment as well as we perhaps could have done. Um, but we, we spoke about that at half time, just being a little bit less, trying to be a little bit less perfect um, and putting things into areas, maybe rather than into people and things like that. Um, but, you know, listen, I, I, we went in at half time and, and, and the lads said, I didn't say the lads said, this is what it's been like. We know this is what it's been like a lot of the season. We just now need to step up and we need to make a few better decisions on the ball. Um, better quality in the final third because, all right, you know, they had, they had one or two. Uh, opportunities but I thought first half we did get into some good areas I think AJ and Connor got into some good areas wide um, Alex Collard's got in a good area at the back post once and put the cross behind so it was just about having a little bit more quality a little bit more uh, substance in the, in, the, in the final third um, and then second half I thought we were a lot better I thought our decision making was a lot better I thought we we adjusted ourselves to the uh, to the pitch and to the environment a lot better and um, I thought overall um, we were we were good quality for the win. Since Ty left the club last week, there's been a lot of speculation about who's going to lead the line, whether it be Will Jones or Shane Bush, Jack Sneeder. So you decided to go with Shane today. What was the thinking behind that? Just a little bit of experience. Um, Shane's obviously um, done the role before, done played the position before, and is is typically a back to goal striker like like Ty Deacon was or is. Um, so we thought it was probably the most like for like, um, and, and, and as we've mentioned a number of times, it, you know we've wanted to come in and uh, I've wanted to come in and, and have that continuity. So it's probably a case of like for like. I thought Shane did did fine. I thought um, in difficult conditions, again with with not a huge amount to feed off. Um, I thought he, he, he worked very very hard. He won some good flicks, and we perhaps could have done more with some of them. But um, you know we've got we've got options up there. I thought Will came on and really did really well. You know ran channels, added that legs uh, up, up top and, and that willingness to, to do ugly stuff. Um, a little bit raw, a little bit I think naivety at times, but really made a, a positive impact and, and built on the good work that, that Bushy had done. I thought in the first 60 minutes. So um, everybody today who's, who's been involved, the, the subs that have come on, the, the players who, who haven't come on, um, everybody positive. And, um, and, and again, I thought we were a good value for the result. Looking back at the first half, Hellesford had quite a lot of the ball, but they didn't really create too many clear cut chances of it. I can, the only one that I can remember was when they headed wide from the corner. That's testament to how well we defended in that first half. Yeah, I thought, I agree, you know, they had, they had quite a lot of possession, but never really got in behind us. Um, they, had, they had the set piece header, they had a shot from the distance, we got a deflection, and, um, and Dean had to get down and, and save. But apart from that, you know, we haven't really been tested. We haven't, they haven't as I say, they haven't, they haven't got in behind us or, or, or worried us. So um, defensively, I thought we were sound, although the midfield, you know, it was a game where it was difficult to put the foot on it. I thought they, they showed energy and showed legs. I thought at times Nathan broke forward and, 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 and was difficult for the opposition and made it difficult for the opposition well. Ben Diamond is, is dynamic and won, won a lot in the air and, and uh, Fernando is front foot, he's really front foot and gets about. So I was really pleased with the back four and midfield three. And then, you know, the, you can see that the front three as well were um, were, were a problem for, for Hennis for the whole game as well. So yeah, pleasing. I thought in the second half we had more of the play, more of the ball, and then we obviously got our goal. We've been so good at set pieces down the years, and when you've got someone in there like Alex, you, you're always going to have a chance. Yeah, it's brilliant. Um, no, Alex, uh, sorry, um, Connor had put a couple of balls in previously, which were like half a yard short, half a yard, no, half a yard more on it beating that first man. And the previous ball from the free kick, I think, that led to the corner for the goal was literally that. You know, and it's difficult because you have to, as a, as a player, taking those free kicks, have a bit of. Um, 
have a bit of bravery to say I'm going to proper put my foot through this and put whip and bend on it to make it make it get past that first man, but not over hit it and things. And the ball for the goal was first class. The ball for the goal was first class, and the header is, 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 is was outstanding. You know, a proper set of arms header in the, in the opposition box. Um, and, and you know, Alex has been great this, this last couple of days with me since I've come through the door in the training. I had a long conversation with him on the phone yesterday. He's, he's what epitomises, I think, the football club and the fight and the, and the, and the leadership that, that I need in the dressing room. Um, he's been great, and that's testimony to the, the week he's had and the, the leadership skills he's got. I thought we managed the game out really well. You also brought Will Jones and Matt Stern on later on, Jesse Ackwine as well. And we certainly had a lot of joy down the channels, you know, playing the ball down for Will to chase on to. And although those last minutes were very nervy, they, they, did, they didn't really have any clear chances where we thought they were going to equalise. Yeah, I agree. I mean, they, I think they had a, a corner just after we scored, uh, which we dealt with. And then it was a case of, of just, you know, managing the game. That's what it's all about. Um, you know, we did well in the corner and, and, and Will, you know, kept it down there for, for, for a couple of minutes really well. And, Balls were, you know, decision making. For me, the difference between first half and like the second half, and then towards the end of the game, is decision making. When to play short, when to play long, when to put it into channels, when to play to feet. And I thought as the game game went on and we grew into the game, I thought we made those decisions a lot better. And uh, just delighted for the lads because it's been a, a tough couple of weeks and they haven't played for a couple of weeks. And to come out and put in a performance like that was uh, was very pleasing. Looking ahead, then we've got two away games next week. I know you don't like to look further ahead than the the next game, so it is Biggles Way this coming Tuesday. They they lost. Today they are bottom of the league, but no doubt they'll be up for the fight. You know they're a side fighting for their lives, and they've got a new manager to impress as well. Absolutely, you know we're not. We it will be tough. It will be tough, as you say. That you know they're down there, but you know they'll they'll want to want. You know we'll go there full of confidence, but they'll want to dampen our party. They'll want to to, to get about us. They'll want to um, improve upon their recent run of form. Whilst there, there's still a chance they can stay up, they'll be fighting for the lives. So we're under no illusion. It's going to be a real scrap. It's going to be a real battle. It's going to be really tough. Uh, but we've got to regroup. We've got to rest up and, uh, and and get ourselves ready for Tuesday. Andy, thank you for your time. We'll see you on Tuesday. Pleasure. Thank you very much. I don't need love.